All right, everybody, we're going to get this thing started. First off, welcome back to New York Comic Con. Guys, we're back. And it feels pretty good, right? It feels pretty good. I don't know how many of you got to go to San Diego, but to me, San Diego was just like it was three years ago, just that everybody had masks. So it's going to be the same thing here. Do the same thing that you're going to do. Have a good time, and let's just get back to what we were doing a couple years ago. Uh, first off, thanks for showing up at the convention here, showing up for the show. We're just going to walk you through some uh, McFarland toy stuff. Uh, and if you guys are interested, gals interested in the other stuff I do, comic books and movies and all that other stuff, that's a panel tomorrow at 4.30. You're going to be talking about that. We're going to have Jim Lee and Greg Capullo up on panel for a short while talking about some of the goofy stuff we're doing. Um, for today, though, we're going to be talking toys, and then at the end, we're going to open up to some questions, if any of you guys have any, so uh, we'll get to that. But let me introduce some of the people up here that make me look good. Look at uh, McFarland Toys is, is a company with a lot of people, a lot of moving parts, and it's the success of everybody in it. It's not me. I just happen to have the name on it, right? So I've, I've got smart enough to know to hire smart people. And if you hire smart people, if you're Phil Jackson and you can get a guy named Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen and a couple other people, you can win rings, right? So you, you always go and get smart people. So I'm going to introduce a couple of them here. Um, and we've got hundreds of others behind the scenes. We're not into. This is AJ. He helps us on the marketing end of things. So he's going to give you and fill in some detail. We got Chris Stacey on the sales end, and she knows all the sort of details of all our live stuff here. And then Big Fat Brian Walters, he's gonna, he's gonna sort of hit all the visuals on there. Brian came over via uh, DC. So when we signed a deal with uh, D, uh, DC Multiverse and DC Direct, Brian was on that side of the fence, and I went and poached them and brought them on our side of the fence so there'd be a nice connection and a nice bridge there. So with that introduction, I'll let Brian start his thing and then we'll fill in all the details in the commentary that goes with it. All right, guys, thanks so much for coming. We've got a, a bunch of announcements here uh, from McFarland Toys. Some may have leaked out last night with a small press event, uh, but we've got three major announcements. The first one, I'm gonna kick to Christy and she'll take it from here. All right, so we are relaunching one of the most beloved lines from McFarland Toys, Movie Maniacs. We're gonna kick off this line. I know, it's exciting. So we're gonna kick off this line in partnership with Warner Brothers, who has opened up their box and given us access to some of the most iconic and beloved characters for us to create this line. So as you can see, I'll show you the next. I know, right? Iconic and beloved. The word maniac has a wide range of words. Uh, and, and, and that was why I chose that word like literally 25 years ago. I wanted it to be able to sort of suit a lot of personalities. So, so every character in this line is six inch scale. They, they're super detailed. So every post character has enough likeness, detail, and deco so that we can nail it every time. And we're gonna show you just a little example of some of the characters that are coming. So you can see, as I said, some of the most iconic over the last hundred years of Warner Brothers, and there's many, many more to come in this line. Yeah, thank you, Christy. Just tip of the iceberg there, so stay tuned for a lot more from Movie Maniacs. We're really excited to bring that line back to, uh, back to stores and back to your collections. Uh, next up, uh, perhaps the biggest movie coming in the next couple of months, uh, Avatar returns to theaters now in a re-release in all of its 3D IMAX glory. Uh, we have a super expansive toy line uh, that we're going to cover. Uh, it starts with World of Pandora, 
uh, which is a smaller scale, but when you've got banshees, military vehicles, the Navi are taller uh, in general, to build out the world Pandora, we wanna make sure you could collect everything. So that's in a smaller scale. And then we have a collector line, uh, which shows all of the banshees and the Navi in their, in their full glory. Everything is blacklight activated, but I'm gonna kick it to AJ, who's gonna walk you through first the world of Pandora, uh, and then onto the collector line. Thank you, Brian. And so as you can see, we have a wide range of, of creatures and characters and, and, and play sets and scenery that uh, are, these are all from the original Avatar movie. Everything here is, is smaller scale, they scale together. Uh, you, what we really wanted to do was be able to build the world of Pandora and take it into your home. So these sets here all scale with each other. It's, they're incredibly detailed still as well, but at a, at a great price point. Um, another really cool feature is every single product has a bioluminescent uh, feature that's activated by blacklight. So you might be able to show a little bit of that later. You check out our Instagram. It's really awesome. And uh, moving on to the... Well, let's, so let's talk about this for just yeah. a minute, though. The, the reason for what you saw up there on that previous slide was when I was talking to the people at uh, Lightstorm and the James Cameron and his people, they wanted to both have the characters and the world, right? They wanted to be able to show off Pandora. Obviously, to show off Pandora, I, I, I go, we got, we got to scale it down. And now you're sort of doing, you know, like when you're playing with Legos, you're building little sort of worlds around it. So they signed off on both sort of a small, a medium, and a large program at different price points that we could just give anybody whatever it was that they wanted. So if you want this landscape, you could get a lot of it and it wouldn't break the bank, which would happen if we were doing everything at a seven, 12 inch scale. Um, but once you go up to the bigger scale, as you can imagine, then you get into the cool detail that uh, uh, James and all his staff wanted us to do. So there's, there's again, this, these are photos here of some of the stuff put together. So if you get some of the bases, and you get some of the background. I mean, you've got sort of the mech suits and everything else that are in there. Uh, the creatures. Uh, I think people underestimate the number of creatures that are in the movies and what will be coming out in the future movies. I got to see a lot of what they're planning for not only the next movie, but the movie after that. And I think there's a whole subculture of just the creatures uh, and less about the characters themselves that are in there that will have value to it, especially the banshees. To me, every kid wants a banshee. When I was a kid, I collected little airplanes and I used to fly them around, right? To me, the banshees are sort of the new airplane uh, that go in there. And each one of them is gonna have a different marking, different colors. They're all based on all the reference that they ended up giving us. So you want to take us through the initial uh, offering from the collector line again from A1. Uh, here is the, the, the collector line with all that ultra articulation that McFarland's known for. Yeah, like Todd was just saying as well. So these are like our highly detailed uh, ultra articulation, and um, everything here scales together as well. So based off the Navi size, you can see Korich actually scales perfectly with the Mega Amp suit. So he fits inside the Amp suit, uh, and it's it's pretty awesome. And uh, the other important thing too, with everything from the original Avatar movie is starting to hit shelves right now. So everything that you've seen so far is, is available. It's, uh, it's pretty awesome. And then the Mega Banshees, Todd, I'll let you. Yeah, so the, ba so the Banshees, they gave us all this detail. It's actually quite interesting when you talk to the people at Lightstorm, you talk to James himself, that they, they have a story and a detail of everything that's on there. So we needed to get it as accurate and as right as possible. Um, and so with the Banshees, not only the color changes, but with different heads and the markings on the wings, you're gonna see, you, have, you might think that you're getting the same Banshee, but the markings are gonna be different because like all of us, we have different sort of freckles and birthmarks on our bodies, even though we may look like our siblings. Um, we wanted to get as much of that in there as possible, so there was a big variety on them. Um, the, also, even even sort of details like when you're when the the Navi are in, which are the blue the blue characters. When the Navi are on their banshees, the the, the way that they sort of grip the the sort of with their feet and their hands is a special way. 
So on some of the characters, they're going to be coming with an extra set of hands and or feet so that you can actually convert them so they can actually go on to the Banshee so that they will sit right. Um, and so here's some of these, these are all photos, obviously, of some of the products. You can see how cool they can actually end up looking. The big mega, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen the video, the big mega, I'll show you a little bit later of the Banshee. It's big. It's, I mean, it's a big boy, right? So if you want something that is going to be almost an art piece up on your mantle or your desk, then uh, those big ones are going to be there. I was hoping that we would be able to do a price range so that people who wanted to buy stuff for themselves could get the sort of big collectible end. But if they wanted to sort of come down and get something for their kids, that there would be those price points down there and they can have as much fun with it as possible too. Uh, and then Todd, you wanted to show off. Oh, here's one, here's one here. So here's, so what you see, shit, I'm gonna pass this around you guys once I'm done with it. Um, uh, what you see up there, so that's the product right here. Here, here it is right here. I don't know if we've got a good light on it, but do we have the black, do we have a black light? To, to hold this. Are, the more it's going to happen. The small ones you're not going to see it quite as much. But the big ones, the big ones are obviously going to, it's going to be a lot more obvious. So if you look at the rider, right? I don't know if you can see this, right? But and you know, and the thing is, it's again we're in the dark. Let me tell you, the, the this black light works in daylight too. So you don't need to be in a dark spot to get that on there. But the same thing is going to happen you know, like on the wings and on the creatures, right? They're all gonna be there. I don't know if you can see it here on on the creature. All of that's gonna be on there. And if, I almost said put a black light in every package so you guys have one. Um, but all, all, all of that's gonna be on all the figures, no matter what the scale is of all the toys. And like I said, even if you're in broad daylight, it works with the black light. You're gonna see it just as vibrant as uh, if, if we were in the dark right in here. So don't break it, it's the only one I got. But you want to take a look at it. Or you're walking around or something like there you go. So again, to, we wanted to have a little bit of toyetic, a little bit of fun with it. Um, and I know that when we first started talking to people at Disney and uh, James Cameron people at Lightstorm, they were super hyped about being able to have that lighting effect that you see in the movies uh that is so spectacular that's in there so uh, we've got some leds on some of the toys that we're doing that actually light up uh, that give that sort of false you know glow that looks like the movie we were trying to emulate that as much as possible so hopefully any of you guys that are uh avatar fans will enjoy it yeah so to, to pick up where todd left off the, the, the rainforest some of those battle packs like Panator with Jake and the Dire Horse, those all come with built-in black lights. So you can you can turn them on. Uh, they'll run all day. They're LEDs, so they literally run for a week straight. I accidentally did it in my house the, uh, last week. I left it on all week, and it's still running. It looks great. Uh, but, yeah, they come with built-in black lights. So, so lots to look forward to. And uh, just on this last slide, uh, there is A2 product coming. Uh, you look forward to that in November. The skim wing that's making its way through the audience now, uh, that is the Mega Banshee from from Avatar the way. Yeah, and, and just so you guys know, we're, we're limited to what we can show on Avatar 2 product. As you can imagine, they've got the movie out. They don't want us sort of blowing their gig. Uh, so we'll be sort of hitting some of the product and some of the characters and some of the items sort of day and date with the movie. So if there's things in there that you guys like, then uh, some of that will actually be in plastic form, right? So it's... Uh, my career is based on paper and plastic. It's an honorable profession. You guys should try it so, yeah. All right. So we're going to go into another new reveal. We're really excited to bring you one of the most celebrated and multi-award winning anime properties with Demon Slayer. So we're really excited to bring this. We've got... Um, you know, a really exciting lineup for next year. You're going to see it very soon. I'll give you a little sneak peek. You can see we've got two scales, both five inch and seven inch, where we're highlighting, of course, demons and our favorite demon slayers, Tanjiro and Inusuka. And, and historically, we've done anime, animation, and sort of cartoon products across the board. We've, I, again, we're not necessarily known for that. We, you know, sort of do the complicated 
sophisticated painted, you know, highly detailed stuff. So I've been pretty uh, shrewd about when we sort of go outside that comfort zone that we're known for. Uh, and I know this was one that kept sort of knocking on our door, both from fan request uh, and from uh, a business level that we just go, yeah, let's go up there and try it, right? Again, again, everything we do, here's what I consider my toys to be, that I'm just a company that basically in the plastic buffet business, which basically means I'm going to put it all out there for you. You slide your plate along at the buffet and you put on it what you want. I never expect anybody to put a sampling of everything on their plate, just like when you go to the buffet. Our job is to put out as many different, hopefully, inter, you know, interesting visually and or strong brand that people will then be able to go. And then it's up to you individually to just pick and choose what it is that you like. And our job is to find, hopefully, things that from time to time some of you might put on your plate. All right, from anime, we're going to jump to the number one... Uh, the number one toy line in North America and Can sorry, America and Canada in 2021. DC right, hold on. Let's step up. I'm, I'm going to say that again. Yeah. Right. The DC Multiverse was the number one selling. Thanks to you out there. It was the number one selling action figure line last year, and that's based on sales. Right. Which means that it outsold. No, you guys are the one to give us the money. I should be thanking you. <laughs> so, it, it, again, there's we only have a small sliver of the multi universe. Right. There's actually other companies that do the multi. So we're up against competition of more multi multiverse, DC multiverse and Marvel and the legends of Marvel and Star Wars. And then every other sort of action figure line in between. DC Multiverse beat them all, right? Our sliver beat all of them. It was a surprise when they gave us the award, and it's based on data. It's like the Nielsen ratings. It's based on actual retail data that is something's been scanned and bought. It, it blew our mind away, and I think part of it is, besides I think we do cool toys, was we were able to, for the first time, introduce a lot of characters that none of you had ever been able to buy before. Uh, and so I think that helped when it's not like the 50th iteration of a character that has been done for 25 years. So the library of DC is very, very, very big. And we were just playing in that pool. And thanks to you for supporting that because it obviously showed there was a hunger for it. So we've got uh, 14 figures that are good. we're going to reveal here in the next couple of slides. Right. So you got to get to see it for the first time. So take pictures and put it on there because you guys are going to be the big shots. All right, so we're, we're going to start with the first seven. Uh, these are seven-inch collector figures. Uh, so we've got... Um, so uh, Duke Thomas, the signal, Catwoman, uh, to build out your Nightfall universe. I think Bane was a pretty big hit uh, with you guys, so we're going to keep building that out. Batman Hush in the blue ca cape and cowl, which is essential to any collector. Superboy, con in the back, Mr. Freeze. Eradicator. Uh, it is in 2023 Superman's 85th anniversary, so you're going to see a lot of Superman figures over the next uh, next uh, year and a half. And then Infinite Frontiers Joker uh, gets us the current iteration of Joker in spring 2023. Uh, in the mega figure category, we obviously don't want to sacrifice scale here. I mean, get sacrifice size. These are in scale with the seven inch figures, standing at a whopping 12 inches tall. So you get Mongol key to. Uh, any Superman collector, and then Frankenstein, uh, I think my personal favorite in the collection here. And then uh, you guys have been big big fans of our Build-A-Wave. Uh, we're going to enter some new territory here. Uh, we're going to, previously it's only been based on comics or video games. Uh, we have a theatrical-based Build-A-Wave uh, that I think is going to uh, kind of wow everybody. Uh, so the Dark Knight trilogy. <laughs> So, it, took a while, it took a while for them to let us get to this point here. But uh, there's a couple characters in there, obviously, that all of us have been waiting to do for a long time. And so they finally signed off on this one, which is going to be awesome. Yeah, so this is a tribute to all three Christopher Nolan movies. So you get Scarecrow, Christian Bale's Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises uniform, uh, Heath Ledger, Joker, uh, Aaron Eckhart's Two-Face, and what's the Build-A-Figure? Build a figure is Bane. So you'll get Bane as part of this collection as well. Uh, so those are the 14 or 15 characters coming in fall and in spring. 
uh, to continue to build out your multiverse. This is not everything. There's more to come. Uh, but I uh, wanted to give you guys exclusive reveals here at the panel. And for those of you that don't know how the build the figure works, it's sort of like Subway sandwiches. Buy four, get one free. Right? So they, each, each of them come with a piece. So that, uh, and again, I, other companies do it. You have to buy five or six. I try to keep it as small as possible so that, you know, you don't have to break the bank to get to that fifth or that free uh, that that comes with it. So uh, you basically take Bane, cut them into four pieces, and you spread it out with the other four, and you, you collect those four that you see up on screen, and you get them. And and in, again, his scale is going to be in, uh, in in line with the other characters from the movie. So tip of the iceberg here. So stay tuned for for more like this. Uh, ju <laughs> jumping to uh, from movies to to television. Uh, Batman sixty six uh, over at our friends at Target. A uh, great nostalgic line, part of DC Retro. Uh, we have a great wave of figures in fall of 22. So, so Egghead, uh, we love the classic villains in this show, um, as well as Alfred as Batman, a great way to get Alfred in there. And a lot of people watch this show in black and white, so black and white is a great variant to include. Uh, we released Batman and Joker, I think, are already on store shelves in black and white. So look to continue with that variant. I think it's a great variant for these toys especially. So now I, I'm going to show my age. This is my Batman, right? Just like Star Trek, who's your captain, right? So this is sort of my Batman. This is what I grew up on right, right here. And the thing that's sort of fun about this, I don't expect a lot of kids to run out and go, oh, mom, what I need is an egghead. Right. I don't expect that. But there's, hopefully there's enough geeks of ours that the thing that was sort of fun for me uh, in the watching those Batman shows, especially as I get older, is that it was so bad that it was good. Right. And so you're going Vincent Price and that bad prosthetic with that little thing on there. And it's, I go and if you get the face right, it's just goofy. Who doesn't who doesn't want to? Oh, by the way, nobody's made it before. This is the piece that you just go. I can't go to eBay and get this even if I want. So I got to go get it over here. That's a little bit of the fun. We're not going to make a ton of it, which will probably make it a little bit hard to go and sort of search for it on the shelves. But we got a couple of goofy bad guys coming down the pipeline if you're a, basically a Batman classic sort of fan out there. Uh, speaking of, of goofy bad guys, uh, so we've got King Tut as well. <laughs> Cloth cape. Cloth cape. <laughs> Cloth Cave, uh, the likeness is nailed. Uh, these are actual production samples. This is not Paint Master. This is what's going to come in the box. Uh, radioactive Batman. And then, so Two Face, uh, this is kind of maybe the bigger piece of this slide. Uh, so there was a great Batman 66 comic book. And we've done a lot of the characters from the TV show, but the comic book brought a lot of more classic Batman villains and characters into the world. So we're going to take some of those characters, like Two Face, who's going to come with his coin. Uh, in scale to you, not the figure. Uh, and uh, we're going to add those into the universe as if they fit. So he's got a humanoid likeness, uh, not a comic book likeness per se, but it's a great way to help build out that Batman 66 world uh, and your collection with bringing new characters. So stay tuned for more from the comic there. Yeah, and, and again, I don't know if you notice up at the top for some of you that haven't seen these out in the wild uh, that are out there. They're not seven inch, they're six inch figures are down a little bit. So they're more of like the retro toys that you sort of remember when you were a kid uh, and, and that allows us a couple of things it allows us to keep the price point down. And because we're emulating that look and the articulation isn't sort of as sophisticated as we do right now, uh, which also allows us to keep the, the price point down. I think it's always valuable to give options again, thinking of it all as plastic buffets to give everybody an option in terms of what price they want to also pay for any of these things that they shouldn't always have to be locked in a 20, 25, 30 price. We should be putting out 10, 12, $15 items on a regular basis. Uh, and then those looking for a holiday gift. Uh, we've got, uh, uh, so classic retro lunchbox uh, featuring uh, four of the, the main villains in a slight color redeco. They're also gonna come with some great collector art cards based on the art style that you see there on, on, the, on the tin lunchbox. So great giftable item. Uh, at Target this fall uh, if you're looking for something for the holidays. But a, and a great way to get the original uh, figures that were released a while back. Uh, okay, hold on. Before we go, who had that lunchbox when they were a kid? Because I know I had it. Who else had it? Shit, you're old too then. Right? <laughs> 
you remember you go to school with it with the little plastic handle and you're like we're so proud right today get beat up probably but pardon me oh you had a hand me down no no it was it was cool you had the thermos right that came with the thermos inside i'm i'm, I'm digressing here for your young kids go look at google thermos uh and, and you had the little thermos in there mom put it in there it was like super awesome yeah so for now you're gonna instead of getting the ham sandwiches you're gonna get figures uh, so, as Todd mentioned at the top, uh, DC Direct is now over here at McFarland Toys, and we've got a few great lines, including resin statues, but the main one under the DC Direct umbrella is uh, DC Superpowers, uh, which is over at our, our friends at Walmart. Uh, it launched, obviously, this summer uh, with a great wave of figures featuring Batman, Superman, and a newer version of Darkseid, including two. Uh, I think super awesome vehicles like the Supermobile and the Batwing. They all have captured. Do we do we have that? We had it yesterday. Do we have it? No, it was at the show. Oh man, I'm telling. Look, I'm telling you, there. I've done a lot of cool toys, right? In 30 years, that one might be one of the coolest ones, <laughs> right? Yeah, there's a little knob. There's a little knob on the bottom. If you ever, man, that's why I wanted to show it. There's a little knob, and then the two hands go like this. <laughs> so. It, all you got to do if you're the bad guy, stand right in the front and then never knock you over. So there's actually a weak point in it. Um, but it's like a goofy little toy. And then that little canopy that is up there, if you lock it and you press the S, it snaps open, right? So you go, you get to put them in. Remember when you were a kid, you, you close it, push a button, close it, push the button, right? I would do that all the time. And then the other fun on that one is, I don't know if you guys can see in the back, if you open up like where the wings are, see the vents? Those aren't a vent. That's the jail cell, because you can then take one of the toys and you flip it open and you can put the bad guy after you punch him, I guess, uh, in the back. And then you can lock him in and fly him to jail or whatever else. So that thing is so goofy that it's awesome. Right. So uh, this one, too, has uh, the wings full uh, so it can it can get small and then it opens up So the box isn't that big. But when you take it out and you open it up, it gets bigger. Same thing if you close the lid and you press the bat logo, it pops. And then in the back, there's a button. And if you see these little sort of pinchers in the front, and then, and then, and then, and then, right? And you can grab the little guy in it. It's just like I'm telling you, at some point, you, play, you just play with it and you feel like you're seven years old again. It's kind of awesome. You can check out our, our YouTube channel. We have a video with Todd. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're coming out with a variant with Todd's sound effects built in, too, so you can... <laughs> uh, okay, so this is what's out on the market now, but for spring of 2023, uh, we got to build out this world, too. So, uh, so Nightwing, Night, uh, sorry, Nightwing, Wonder Woman, and Deathstroke, all in the superpowers uh, form factor. And then uh, what would they be without some vehicles? So uh, we've got Wonder Woman's Invisible Jet in the media vehicle category. Uh, it's just going to be an empty package, uh, and then uh, and then we've got um, then we've got the Batmobile as well. So uh, you know, Batman needs a sidekick to ride shotgun. So Nightwing and maybe potentially a Robin down the road uh, for that. So plenty more to come. To Super Powers to tip the iceberg. The invisible jet. I've seen it. It's at the office. I, I just saw it the other day. And again, it's so bad. It's good. You know, because it's all just clear plastic. But you have to, when you make toys, you have to have pieces and you have to put them together. So you have to have rivets and stuff in it. So you can still see all that, right? So it's not like that's invisible, right? So you're going, it's still a toy, but they're trying to fake that it's invisible. But this is how toys were made 20, 30, 40 years ago when I broke into the industry. They were just bad, which is why I got into them. But now that I'm making bad toys, I go, they're kind of fun, right? So, <laughs> No likeness concerns here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, moving on to page punchers. So uh, we're bringing you know, we're bringing comic books uh, to mass in two different form factors, two different scales. Uh, the first one is a seven-inch scale, and then we have our three-inch scale page punchers. So we're working with exclusively with DC to create custom comic books in the seven-inch scale. So the designs are done here at McFarland Toys by Todd and the team, and then we work with the editorial team at DC uh, and the top talent there to uh, create a great book. So. Uh, coming up in spring 2023, uh, we've got a great wave of Aquaman figures uh, designed by McFarland Toys. So you've got Aquaman, Black Manta, Ocean Master, and Aqualad on the right-hand side. And what we're going to do uh, with these is we're going to start including uh, character covers for each for each figure. So we've got character-dedicated covers. So Aquaman, Black Manta, Ocean Master, and Aqualad. 
uh, will come with their custom covers uh, in the wave of four figures. So lots more to come in the seven inch form factor. Uh, and then we've also got our three inch uh, uh, package, which you all are walking away with a Flashpoint uh, foil cover uh, today. Uh, Batman Hush is what helped kick, kick, off, kick off this line, but we've got four great comics coming in spring 2023. So Batman Beyond uh, from Future's End, uh, Batman Rebirth, Flashpoint, we're gonna continue. Uh, and then Forever Evil is a great place to, to land all your villains. Uh, so look for way more in this in this product category in the three inch scale. We're really excited about that. And the clamshell packaging keeps everything uh, in mint condition. Uh, so stay tuned here. Moving on to the resin slice of DC Direct. So Batman Black and White is the longest running statue line uh, with over 100 statues. Todd's was the 100th statue. Uh, on the left, you've got <laughs> Batman by Olivier Coypel. He's been uh, big on the Batman books lately. Uh, and then you've got the Harley Quinn, red, white, and black. Both are in seven inch scale. Uh, that's from Future State featuring the artwork of Derek Chu. And then uh, two reveals here. We've got uh, uh, Dennis Cohen from the Milestone universe making his entry into the, the Batman black and white world. And then uh, Batman, the animated series, uh, hit a milestone this year, uh, 30 years since that show launched. Uh, so Bruce Timms, the Joker, uh, enters the Joker purple craze line. So all these statues in scale to one another. Uh, great collector pieces here uh, that should have some longevity. So the one on the left, the Dennis Cowan Batman, when we first started it, um, there was some reference that was picked uh, of Dennis. I think even one of the sculptors on our team began sculpting it. But it was a nice drawing by um, Dennis, but the cape was limp and down. And I, I thought there was already plenty of those out in the market. And then as I was looking through some of the other reference, it was there was this shot that you see right here. And I go, what? Batman to me is about the cape. I mean, maybe because, you know, Spawn is about the cape. I think it adds to the graphic of everything. Um, and, and even the one that they did, the black and white 100 that was based on my drawing, that was all cape. I was a cape with a head pot. There's no body on it, right? So the, uh, I, I go, come on, man. People like capes. The problem is it becomes a little bit of a problem. How do you ship it without breaking all those tips and whatever? But I told them I, th I thought it was worth making the effort to just have something that felt like the volume on it was a little more flamboyant than what had been done in the past. So, I, And I've seen it, and at least, I don't know, unbroken, it looks really good. So. <laughs> Uh, last but not least, we have our DC Designer Series. This features artists doing kind of what they're most known for. So we've got Josh Middleton, uh, famous for his Batgirl covers uh, in that great Batgirl suit. And then, obviously, Greg Capullo's Joker dancing with the Batman there uh, for spring of 2023. Just the cape and the cowl, of course. But uh, a great uh, sculptural iteration of uh, Mr. Capullo's artwork there. Um, at slightly higher price point, those are both at 12 inches. Uh, so lots to look forward to there. Uh, on to uh, Spawn. So, Todd, you can jump in anytime here, but we've got our seven inch fall 2022 figures, which are currently up for pre order. They were only announced uh, just a, a couple weeks ago. AJ, you can correct me if I'm wrong. That's correct. Uh, but features Nightmare Spawn, King Spider, and Plague uh, in the seven inch scale for fall 2022. The giant mega figure is Omega Spawn. Uh, at 12, a 12 inch, uh, in seven inch scale, so 12 inches tall, uh, in scale with those figures. Uh, the great detective two pack of Sam and Twitch. And then uh, we have a sneak peek for spring of 2023 as far as what those waves, that wave of figures is. And that is uh, Medieval Spawn, Monolith, and uh, Sin in our lineup for spring of 2023. Yeah, so the, I mean, the, what, what I'm trying to do on these is no different than what I've done before with uh, Spawn to help kickstart literally the the, the McFarland toys line uh, all those years ago. Trying to keep them, just like we're doing with the DC Multiverse, trying to keep them in uh, scale and, you know, to play with some of the detail. I mean, the, if you, if I've seen the sculpts of all of these, obviously. The Medieval Spawn's got a lot of cool detail in it. Uh, I'm, I'm a stickler for even things like monolith, the big guy in the middle, to have like a texture so it feels like there's, you know, you're rubbing your hand against an elephant and or a rhino that it's, you know, sort of chap, rough skin or leather or something like that. And then trying to grab some of the cool sort of tech parts of Sin, who is a character that's been around, 
you know, literally since issue number, I think nine, uh, it was a character called uh, uh, Cogliostro that I, I just want him to be as the equal, in, hopefully in the future of a Doc Doom or a Lex Luthor or a Magneto or something like that, which is sort of where I'm heading with that character right now in the comic books. So we have one final announcement here, and it uh, revolves around page punchers, because what would page punchers be without uh, adding Spawn into the equation? Uh, so in spring of 2023, uh, we're going to launch with two comics and four figures. So uh, these are going to be uh, uh, a comic with two figures uh, uh, to, to do it proper justice. Uh, so on the left, you'll get Spawn, number one, with anti-Spawn. And then on the right, Gunslinger uh, from Spawn 309, along with the the demon auger on the far right there. So uh, look for more here. Uh, Todd, if you want to add anything, uh, we're excited to get spawned in page punchers. Yeah, um, we're just trying to bring in some of the classic, uh, in the first one on the, on the one on the left, some of the classic characters that were introduced way back uh, in the early 90s when we began image comic books and the spawn one. And then the, the spawn gunslinger is a story that actually has both of those characters in there. I mean, obviously the, that's a far newer book. But those characters were both in that title. So we go, hey, why don't we tie the characters that are actually in the book into the actual package itself? Uh, so that's what the Gunslinger version is going to be. Uh, not so much because uh, Anti-Spawn came a little bit later in the comic books. But we, we needed to put a second character in it that we thought would look compelling in package. Uh, and then last but not least, we just wanted to uh, showcase, uh, you know, something that's coming on the editorial side. Uh, can't sneak peek a ton here, but we will have some product uh, along with this as well. So uh, stay yeah. tuned for that. Uh, lots to talk about. Yeah. So the when I when I signed the contract to do the Batman Spawn crossover that I'll be talking about tomorrow at my panel with uh, Greg Capullo and Jim Lee. Um, we we had a paragraph in there that says, if any toys of Batman Spawn are going to be made, I get to make them, right? So uh, I go, otherwise we're not, we're not doing this. Uh, so we have we have a couple things in the pipeline and even, you know, looking at things like statues, uh, you know, from some of the pre-existing artwork or some of the new artwork just to get those two guys together in the same packaging that hasn't been done I don't know if ever. I don't think we actually did any toy product uh, the first time 25 years ago. So this would be the, the first time those two will be in the same package. I think we did one statue in in existence, uh, but uh, you know more is going to be coming down the pipeline. So hopefully we'll be able to announce that pretty soon. So yeah, that's that's our full presentation. We wanted to make sure that we saved enough time for for some questions. We, uh, we love you too. <laughs> we, we went through a lot of products, so we wanted to save some time for questions. So. Yeah, if you got a question, so if you got a question and, and I deem it worthy, you get a free toy. So if you ask me a question and, I, and, and it's good, you get a free toy. If you stump me, you get two. So, uh, but go ahead. Oh, you here. So you can. You can be hand, hand one to them right over here. Okay, so we're gonna go. We're gonna go to the first first one. Who's up first? Let me see what we got. What, oh, hold on. We got some here. We got some here. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little bit of both. Okay, you're the first one online, so you get just for being the first looking. And you're good looking. You're getting one. Even if it, even if, so, go ahead. Ask a question. Hey, uh, hey, thank you so much for obviously all of this. Um, especially thank you for DC Multiverse. I think as a 33 year old, you're giving me figures I've wanted since I was seven, eight years old. Um, so I don't know if you know, but they're one of the best groups of figures to kit dash uh, and be able to sort of create your own versions of your DC heroes. The one thing that I seem to notice a lot of people talk about is the head pegs. Is there any chance you would consider making the head pegs one size so that they could be easily swapped to other figures of yours? Um, wow, that's an interesting question because we're not thinking about it in those terms. Uh, and now I'm going to get sort of boring and technical with you. All the cho all the choices of what we do with those pins are predicated upon how much movement you want with it. 
how much lateral movement you want with it and how thick their heads are, right? So if I, again, as you can imagine, monolith neck and a female neck is not gonna be the same, so you have to have a different pen to go into it, so you're gonna get some variety. But I will bring it up to say, hey, if they're sort of in the same ballpark, can we get some consistency? I think the, people would the, love that, so for the thank kit, you. For the kit basher, so that's a, that's a good one. All right, who's sitting here that wants to ask a question? Shoot, you're old and you're good looking. I'm giving it to you. And, <laughs> and look at that. Let me see your shirt. It's a good looking shirt, too. All right, there you go. Hold a sec. Is it a good one? Yeah. All right. <laughs> My question is Will we get super groups like the Metal Men, the Legion of Superheroes? And where's the women, man? <laughs> Giganta, Power Girl. Let's bring them. Yeah. <laughs> Brian? Did you say the question again? Sorry, I didn't hear it. He was asking about like groups, like the Legion of Superheroes or something like that, doing groups or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we love the build a wave for the super groups. I think you're going to uh, stay tuned. There's going to be some uh, big ones in 2023. Uh, but, you know, we got the Crime Syndicate uh, if, you know, this year. Uh, Johnny Quick. Well, you know, we, we should do a small one, right? Yeah. And may, but uh, but yeah, yeah. So stay tuned for Super Group. We got a lot to get through. I mean, we we still missing some core Justice League characters as mentioned. So yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. You just gotta be patient. Sure, yeah, yeah. Up at the mic here. Yeah. Um. Thank you. Uh. Just want to say, really impressed by the uh, range of, of different um you know product type that you have here. But Todd, as a fellow Canadian, my favorite figure of yours is the strange room Bob and Doug McKenzie. Oh, if you guys haven't seen it, Google it. Google it. Two guys sitting on a stage drinking beer. <laughs> right? It's actually a pretty good, it's actually a pretty good one. And for all of us Canadians, we actually know that it's the iconic sort of visuals of it. So, yep. Thank you. All right, thanks. All right, let's see. Somebody sitting. Somebody sitting. Who else we got sitting here? Uh, let's see what we've got. Let's see what we've got. All right. Here, to this young lady over here. Oh, you've got one of the fish tanks. Look at you. All right, there you go. What's your question? Yeah, I just wanted to say, if you you ever come into um, planning of um, making figures like this type of display, like the old school yeah. type. So let me hold that up. This is what we used to call the fish tank, right? That's what, that's what we called it internally. I don't know if some of you old folks remember this one. It came with the figure. You could pop it off. As a matter of fact, you could actually stack them, right? And some of them actually even had a light in it. So we've been talking about that, coming up with a, a case that some of the toys come in that you can use it. Because I always thought these things look cool. So we're talking about that right now. So the answer is yes, right? Unfortunately, every time you add something like that, the cost goes with it. And so we're always, I'm always trying to mitigate, like, it looks cool, but does that then become a $50, $60 item? And how many of those can we sell? So, all right, you're up, you're up. I, um, I just want to say that um, I kind of feel like they all went out being one of the younger fans. Through the DC multiverse figures where I actually became a fan of Spawn, I had never, like, read any of the comics. And it's through your figures where... I was just introduced to that, and it's just your designs of any of the characters. They're so, just, they're amazing. And I wanted to ask, um, I'm a big fan of your, your Batman and your Wonder Woman designs. I wanted to ask, is there any future plans for a Superman design? Um, yeah, the answer is yes. Uh, uh, Warner Brothers has been very kind in letting us experiment, we'll leave it at that word, and come up with designs that look cool. As a matter of fact, we've done some designs that they've then given to the comic book company to say, hey, you want to put this in your comic book? Uh, so, and part of that is that we still have to think about selling toys internationally. We can't just sell items that are just going to hit us here at New York Comic Con, that, and, you know, us geeks that are well-versed in the mythology. Right, we need to be able to sell product, you know, around the globe where people don't collect comic books. Which means, in a simple fact, they just got to look cool on a shelf or on a peg, right? So, can you do robot uh, Superman? Yes. Can you do, you know, creature Superman? Yes. Can you do alien Superman? Yes. Right. I mean, it's still Superman, but we can still come up with a cool design on it. They've been pretty flexible uh and letting us do that so we're going to continue to go down and experiment a little bit with that so might not be everybody's cup of tea but it'll still be superman product so there you go thanks for your question all right so.
Who else we got? Who's got a question here? We're going on this side. We're going on the aisle side over here. Let's see. Who are we? Oh, shit. This guy's been wriggling all day long right here. Chubby Checkers has been wriggling, doing the twist the whole time. We're going to give him one. All right. Oh, hold a second. Here, you need a mic. Hi. Uh, my name's Aaron Sparrow. I'm a comic and animation writer, and a large part of that is because of you and me discovering your work at an early age. Uh, my dad once drove us 100 miles out of the way of our vacation so I could visit the spider's web in Washington. Uh, but it's the first time I've ever gotten to meet you, so thank you for that. Uh, one of the things that I've gotten to do recently is uh, write on uh, season four of Young Justice. And I was just curious, if, those are some really great designs and they're beloved, and there's a lot of easy repaints because they have stealth suits and things like that, so they could be monetized really well. Uh, I was just wondering if, you know, maybe in the back of your head, if you could, uh, you know, just put back, maybe looking in, at some of those designs and seeing if we could get some of those characters. Uh, the keeper of all that is Brian, so he just made a note, right? He just made a note on there. Hey, let me, let me just say one thing before we come back over here for another question. We, we get, and I get a lot of credit in doing these toys that people say a lot of kind things, so, so thank you. Here's the thing that's really odd to me. It's always been odd. We don't do, I never did anything that anybody else couldn't do already. And even more curious, they could have done it 20 years before I did it. it it's clay in a shape. They used clay for 40 years making toys. Why they didn't put it in the same shape? I don't know. It was odd, right? I didn't do anything. I didn't invent anything. I just added more cuts. I put more detail. I put more bolt. It's just clay. They could shape their clay in the exact same way. The reason they chose not to, I found out later, was because there's an efficiency to it. And the less detail you put, the less you have to paint, the less articulation, the less cost, and it becomes pennies. And all of a sudden, you're starting to add up pennies times millions of units. And that's why they cut corners. And once I figured out what their weaknesses were, I was able to then go, well, I'm going to go to the places they're not going to. They're not going to spend that extra money. I'll spend it. Oh, by the way, I'm not a public company. I don't have to maximize profits every 90 days. I can just put it into the product, right? I don't. How, how many of you guys remember years ago I when Spawn first came out? I did Malbolgia. I don't. You remember Malbolgia? It was like it was like our toys were like 5.99, and they were all like you know everybody's toys was like five inches. So I think I made mine six, just out of spite, just just to say my guys are going to beat the shit out of yours, right? But then if we made Malbolgia, and if you took Malbolgia and he was in this package, and then you stood him up, he was like. 15, 16 inches tall, and I sold it for the same price, the same $5.99. Now, my accountant said, Todd, you're going to lose money on every one of them. I knew that in advance. And I go, it's okay. We're not going to make a bazillion of them. We're just going to do it. But I wanted to have that one character to just be able to just do the ad that says, my character ships taller than yours. <laughs> And then add at the same cost. And, then, and, and even though it's a weird one that you lose money on a toy like that, it for you people, you guys want what? He's going to give us all that plastic? Never underestimate plastic. You can always sell plastic, right? Which is why the big characters always sell. That once people saw that size of that toy at that price, I got a giant group of loyal people coming. And some of you probably are still here. Why? Because I had to give a couple bucks away a long time ago. So what? Right? So what? Sometimes you have to invest to the left to get some of the money back on the right. And if it meant giving away a losing toy so that people want that company's cool and they got big toys and I don't understand why the other guys can't do it, fine, do it, right? And it serves me well, which is why I try to keep the price down as much as possible. Because if I make any profits after I pay these good people, it only goes into my pocket. You know what? My wife and I and our family have led a good life thanks to all of you. I don't need more of your money. I, I, I'll take a little bit, right? But I don't, need, I, don't, I don't need more of your money. I also have the only comic books that are $2.99 in the industry. Can I go higher? Yes. But no. I, I remember what it's like to have a work on a fixed budget and basically have to pick and choose what it was that I bought. So anyway, sorry for that answer. Yeah. Long answer. Okay, you're up. Oh God, thank you very much. Um, hey, so yeah, I'm Nick. I'm with some of the Batman News team over there. Uh, nice. Doesn't kidding. work. Next. Understand. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> thank you. I just wanted to say hi, and I wanted, to, in terms of credit, I wanted to thank you so much for resisting the price creep. I know how much shipping is at the moment. Worth yeah. saying, you're doing amazing work there. Um, is there one figure that you guys really want to make that you're struggling to for whatever reason? 
Um, I don't know, Brian. Is there anything on the, especially on the, D, the DC side that we're running up against the wall? I would love to do Dark Side in its full scale, like you know, like our mega figures max out at 12, 12 inches. But I'd love to do more Dark Side, at, you know, three feet tall if we could. But we're gonna, have, you know, space in the planogram that gets tricky. Um, you know, there's characters with a ton of deco. I'm trying to think of one, but uh, top of my head, but Dark Side for me is is, is the big one. I'm trying to get in there somehow, some way. Um, and to your other point, you said something that was kind of important that I, I know that unfortunately somehow at some point gets passed down to all of you. And you said the price creep, right? Yes. And here's a, here's a, how, how this works, right? Just so you guys know from my the world I live in. Pre-pandemic, we used to load up all of our toys in a container. You guys have all seen these pictures of the containers on the boats, right? We used to load up those containers and bring them up over here. At that point, a container for us was about 2,000, 2,100 bucks. To fill a container, 2,100 bucks, move it across the ocean, right? And then all of a sudden, demand came that everybody sort of got in a panic, just like toilet paper. It's like, oh my God, we've got to have it now. So everybody then started over ordering and they didn't make any more container. So now the bidding sort of started going up on it and it went, okay, now it's going to be 3000, right? It's like, okay, we're going to raise the price of the toys. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. At the high point, that container that we used to pay $2,100, we were paying over $20,000 for one container, 10 times the cost, not a hundred percent increase, a thousand fold increase just in the container. That doesn't include what the, what the, the, the workforce was and the manufacturing costs and on some of that was going up because again, gas was going up. Plastic is a byproduct of petroleum, right? So those costs were going up. And what was end up happening, because we have had plenty of these conversations, was our margins were going down and down and down and down. And we were having to sell more to make less money. I continue to resist that as long as possible and eventually we'll be forced to have to go up a little bit here and a little bit there, whatever else, right? But again, the public companies who have to maximize profits are gonna run those costs ahead of time. And I think also one of the things that drove that award that got us the multiverse was that when they went up in price, we didn't, right? I go, no. I remember the accountants coming, Todd, what are you doing? I go, no, I'll make less and let's keep it. And if we have to go up in price, then let's be the last one in the pool, not the first one. Let's be the last one. So everybody else is sort of pushed and basically got people agitated. Let's be the last one to agitate them and do it. And how can I get away with it? Because I'm not public. And it's the upside of, of, of a lot of things that we do that it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, I'm the only one who doesn't then get it in the pocket. I'm okay with that, folks. I'm okay. You guys are giving me a good life. I don't need twice a good life, right? We're good. We're good. So. Well, thank you. Um, I thanks for noticing. Hey, Todd, two more questions. Two more questions. Two more questions. Got two more questions with five toys. How's that going to work? <laughs> All right. Let's see who we've got here. Uh oh, we got to go way in the back. If somebody was the last one way in the back, so I got to get one way in the back. Holy shoot! Look at them. Hey, oh, I'm gonna, who are you, young lady? This is my lovely wife, Wanda Kalamajek. She's been hanging with me for over 40 years. So uh, everything that I've done, she gave me all the best idea, right? So Spawn was her idea. She just let me run with it. So if you guys look at the inside front cover of uh, Spawn number one, and you look at the editor, Wanda Colomidrick right there. She'll be doing signatures later. So uh, all right. that was a passive hand raise, but I'm going to give it to you. All right. What do you got for him? Thank you, sir. So all the business of, like, getting licenses, what would you say the hardest company to convince to go in the parlor to say, give us the license because we're, we're good business for you guys. And what after, afterwards did make you feel like, yeah, I got you. Okay. Uh, wow. I would, it's a good question. What's the hardest license? To some degree, I mean, Christie's up there, she knows. They're all kind of hard. They're all, everybody wants to know why we should give it to you. Again, the success that you have allows you to then say, hey, I did this, and these companies are giving uh, their trust to us, so why why won't you? Um, so they're, they're all they're all kind of equally difficult, I, 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 I would say. 
here's here's what here's what I would say to that. Not not who difficult. Who haven't we gotten yet? Right at some point. Right before I take my last breath, I I I, I have to do a Spider-Man toy. Right. I, I just have. To. And, and, and even more, I want to do a McFarlane artwork Spider-Man toy by McFarlane because I think I'll get it right better than anybody else. Right? Because I know what I was drawing when I was doing. Um, that would be kind of cool to be able to do toys that are based on my own drawings. Um, but uh, and that may be difficult, but uh, we'll see. So last question. You're so, okay. Last question. Somebody in line right in here. All right. Good sir, here you go. You get to be the end. You get the last word. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. Really appreciate everything you make. All the, all the toys. I, I buy a ton of action figures that you guys make. You kind of stole my thunder. I was going to ask you what were the odds of you getting the uh, Marvel license, but uh, you kind of just answered that one. <laughs> um, so let, let's talk about. It. I've had conversations, um, but every every company that has a big brand name, they they consider it to be a pie, and then they cut up that pie as much as they can. Right, and they come up with a little division. So you have, oh, you can only sell in mass. Oh, you can have the massive toy license. Oh, you can have aisle seven product. Oh, you can do cute stuff. This is how Funko gets it, right? You can do cute stuff, and it has to have, but it can't be articulated. They cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it. So maybe you could just do seven inch figures. The, well, no, right? well, well, that'd be great. Everybody has it, that, but usually what ends up happening now is there's a limitation on what you can and can't do with it. And then there's a price point that goes with it, right? And where you can sell it. So those cracks are still there. It's just that at, for some of them, it means that I can get in the game. It's just that the price has to be higher. Right. And, I, and I've always been sort of resistant to selling like on a consistent basis, high price stuff. Yeah. So I have to get past my own reservations on asking you guys for a lot of money, right? So I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of that. Um, Probably within the next month, I'll be announcing my next Kickstarter too, right? We had the one during the pandemic set record. Uh, I wanted to make sure all that got out there so it was in your hands so that you could basically go, oh, if he does another one, is it worth it, right? We'll be making that announcement with all those details coming soon. I uh, hope everybody here enjoys the rest of their show. It's a marathon. Pace yourself. It's only Thursday. we got three more days. Thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Everybody be good. Be good.